We receive a lot of questions from customers. Which connection shall we use when we play back music? I would say immediately USB is the least preferred one. USB is not designed for audio. USB is designed for compatibility. It's going to give you data integrity, but with a lot of processes that minimizes maximum at which we, we can achieve when we play back music. So USB on its own is a half-baked interface, in my view. Yes, extremely versatile. Yes, you can connect everything, but everything will sound way more mediocre than it could have been. If you want the maximum performance, then one needs to look elsewhere. So back in the days, the best sort of solution to me was the integrated solution. It is actually still the best solution when the data pickup is closely linked or integrated with the digital to another conversion process where there's very little in between. So as we can only degrade the recording and the best possible outcome for us is do the least amount of harm. So in order to do the least amount of harm, we need to have the best possible match between sender and receiver. So we want minimum processes. The only process should be there is just transmitting the data from the source to the receiver with minimum amount of modulations. So minimum distortions, minimum of processing, and that would potentially cause less degradation to, to the signal. And in the early days when digital originated, where the CD was the main sort of media and where the musical data, so the recording was stored, the data would be then transmitted from the CD pickup over I2S to the, to the DAC. The receiver and the sender, they would be closely matched so there's no impedance mismatch or any, of any kind and it's just a short of distance goes from, from the CD pickup side to the DAC interface basically. That ensured signal integrity, the most sort of direct sound and that would be the best sort of outcome. And that was the normal practice in the early CD players before the DAC and the CD digital source went into separate chassis. There was less of a problem of basically of signal being transmitted. Once we started separating the digital transport and the DAC side, we needed now a new standard to interconnect the DAC and the, uh, the digital transport. And so Sony and Philips came up with the idea that we have an I2S, so the data, the clock and everything together, let's put it into one signal and they call this the Sony Philips digital interface, so SPDIF, so that SPDIF is essentially all the signal being merged into square wave, which operates on high uh, megahertz frequencies. The professional, the balanced version of SPDIF that's also very well known, is called AES-ABU. So it's essentially SPDIF, but instead of going over the RCA connectors or RCA phono, it is connected over XLR. If it's done over the interface transformers, it's balanced all the way, even the SPDIF. So on our devices, we have both SPDIF with RCA phono, which is a standard, and XLR, which basically are connected in parallel and they are connected over the same an interface transformer. So one can use interchangeably. What different is, is basically the cable that one is using and the, uh, the plugs. So the socket and plug is different. Uh, as we evolved with our technology, everybody sort of jumped on the USB. Our demand started outgrowing in the technology in storage became so much more affordable to, to the mass consumer, we started thinking, okay, we have so much storage, why do we rely on these plastic disks, right? We can play it back from our hard drives and hard drives storage became cost-free and why wouldn't we play it from the cloud or somewhere else? So this computerization uh, started evolving with, with the uh, cost of storage going down. And that brought another sort of problem. How do we now connect our DACs to this computer? So we have a computer, how do we connect? The evolution of the digital side of the digital source corresponded so much with the evolution of the DAC side. So the newer DAC generation was the lower cost uh, bit stream and noise shaping Delta Sigma type. That was where 
where the USB as an interface started sort of becoming a bridge between the computer and the dock. So that became sort of the golden standard. But USB, if you remember what it is, as the name implies, universal serial bus, stemmed from the computer side, not from the dock side. It's a computer interface and that should be remembered as such. Computer were no, never really created uh, to be uh, audio playback machines. So it is not really designed for audio purposes. Unnecessary processing in audio, in digital playback, is actually affecting the musicality in, in a very adverse way. The original CD player, where the processing was at its minimum, led to so much better results in terms of data being streamed to a dock rather than now the modern computer which had all, has all the processing power but virtually no uh, no specialization in audio uh, computer is a collection of transistors and processors integrated circuit designs on the large motherboard everything is extremely miniaturized so getting everything miniaturized is exactly the opposite way of optimizing something for audio materials and components on these compu uh, computer chips, the operating system, how adverse they affect the sound quality. It's not just the processes that are very noisy in nature because of so many transistors, but also the power supplies of these uh, computers are usually low cost and powered by switching mode power supplies. So the hardware of the computer becomes a real problem. Even you have this nice interface now and it's so universal, you can connect any computer, laptop, tablet, whatever you wish. That becomes a serious bottleneck to the sound quality because you're not in charge anymore. What is being connected, which operating system, which software is running. Now you have just a dock and something being connected to it. A lot of audio files realized that now uh, look, uh, I have this uh, wonderful dock, but I connected to a different uh, sort of laptop or different computer with different operating system. And it sounds so different. Why? I connect not, well, I change the cable and it sounds still different. No, what is it? Oh, I changed the power supply. The thing sounds, sounds different again. So, well, it's part of the chain. So everything that we have now connected to the dock is going to determine or define the sound quality of that dock. SQRS is the other extreme to sort of USB interface, right? So it's highly specialized, but being highly specialized and with having the upside of having highest potential uh, quality to sound, uh, the downside is that we can't have it long enough and every manufacturer has a slightly different standards. So there's a drift. Unless it comes from the same manufacturer, i square s on the receiver side and i square s on the sender side may not harmonically match. It was meant originally to be transmitted within one device. Once you, you moved in two separate units, SPDIF was your solution. Now you can connect one meter of distance across the both units. So we have USB on one extreme, extremely versatile, and but with, with the huge price to pay, the sound quality is simply the lowest. Then we have i square s which is the sort of the least versatile with the highest potential to sound quality. And then we have something in between, and that is AES-EBU or SPDIF, Sony Philips Digital Interface. In my view, the SPDIF or AES-EBU, if this is done by the same manufacturer by using correct interface transformers and correct matching, that ensures the widest possible compatibility with the minimum downside to the sound quality. So it's like the best of both worlds in my book. If one wants USB, one is always buying half-baked product because the rest of the digitals, the source of before the DAC has an equal, if not more, importance to the overall sound. The SPDIF was designed for audio, unlike USB. SPDIF is a native audio interface. One can connect the dots. USB is not an audio interface. It was never intended to be one. It was adapted. It works for compatibility, not for optimal sound quality, unless one, again, redesigns it specifically for audio. We at S1X Audio Design are manufacturer of both or complete solution, the digital transport side, so most people call this nowadays streamers, 
so our VDT range and our DAC range. We recognize the problem of signal transmission between two separate units. We have specifically developed interface transformers to ensure that there's a harmonic impedance match between the sender and the receiver so that there's no degradation of the signal. That ensures the best possible signal integrity, which also ensures the best possible musicality and sound quality.